We are here, yes, with a special guest, David Robinson, who is the Bay Area Director of Keshet, the right. Jewish GLBT. Did I, am I missing any letters? GL, GL, uh, how many these, letters days, are these days we say LGBT or LGBTQ. LGBTQ. And then the young kids start adding for us LGBTQIQA and one through in a U. And we decided it must be for unicorns. Yeah. Uh, that's right. the side. And of course, this, it might be. Of course in San Francisco, yes. And basically, so, basically, basically, basically anyone who's not a homophobic bigot yes. is now included in yes. the gay community. Yeah, of course. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I figure that pretty much everybody's queer in some way. I mean, in San Francisco, I hope. Oh, in San Francisco, for sure. <laughs> yes, and so, so tell us a little bit about what, what Keshet is. And, uh, yeah. yeah, so Keshet is a, is a national Jewish organization, an LGBT Jewish organization, and the purpose is to fight for the full equality and inclusion of LGBTQ people in Jewish life. Yeah. So the idea is that transform the Jewish community, which is already pretty good, on it, average, yeah. yeah. But, you know, depending on which part of the Jewish community, the Orthodox world is still really resistant. Yeah. And Probably then, because they're all in the closet, right? <laughs> well, a friend of mine who used to work at Different Light, remember Different Light Bookstore? <laughs> yes, yes. Right, on Castro, used to talk about some of the yeshiva boys who kind of come in yeah. and make their way to the back. Jews, Christians, Muslims, there's queer people everywhere. I got news for you. Right. Statistically, I don't really think there's any difference, you know? I mean, and, but what is uniquely Jewish? Uh, Especially out here, the big challenge is hmm. there are a lot of people who are, accept, uh, their intentions are great and they have, you know, LGBT friends and maybe at their organization there's even a staff member who's open or a few but they don't get that if you can't read their mind and you mm. don't already know that's their attitude, yeah. then nobody would know. So like if it's a synagogue that doesn't have any images on their website of anyone who's obviously LGBT or queer, or yeah. they don't have, it's, it's a school and there's nothing in the curriculum, or it's a JCC, a Jewish Community Center, and none of the programming is anything LGBT or queer, then nobody knows that they're accepting. It's like, oh, it's in your head, but yeah. is it actually existing in the world? Did, yeah, yeah. Does that mean though that like if they do put something on their website, then they're kind of flying the flag for gay rights, and that might uh, like get a backlash from like conservative people? Only if they feel they have a large uh, population that they serve that is kind of homophobic. So there are a few places where down like down in Palo Alto, hmm. where there's a really large Russian Jewish community. Yeah, there's a lot of homophobia that. You know, sometimes folks are a little more worried about, oh, can we just be open about the fact that we serve LG LGBT people? But it's changing. It's changing a lot. Like, yeah. What would you say is the number one issue that, that you face? Here in, in the Bay Area, the, the two challenges that we face in our work, one is the paradoxical one of gay blasé. Yeah. That everyone's like, oh, been there, done that, no yeah, big yeah. deal. And we have to kind of say, like, oh, well, you could do better. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're losing um, the community. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. the one that... And this one is really, really close to my heart, is especially in our work in the schools, um, there are a lot of families in the Bay Area that more and more who support <coughs> their children no matter what their gender expression is yeah. from a really early age. And they recognize that it could change, yeah. but that means they're going to schools where very often the teachers have had no experience with this. There could be kids, in fact, there are always a lot of kids who have been taught boys yeah. do this, girls do that, and that's it. And the schools really need to learn you know, the ones who are accepting, they need to learn how you, and in fact, the, the biggest challenge is like, even when they're well-meaning, sometimes what they end up doing is they treat it as if it's the issue just for that child and where you want to get them to is, yeah. no, this is about gender. Yeah, this yeah. Is how you're teaching gender to all the kids. So ironically, by, by, by supporting it in the household, you're actually making it harder for them relative to how it's been in the past to getting along in school. It, they, it's like they, a natural step about how They face an additional challenge. One, one family we were, we were talking with has a, a little boy who often likes to wear dresses, and he's totally comfortable doing this when, there are, um, when he's with adults. Yeah. But because he got bullied or teased, wasn't yeah. even quite bullied, he was teasing immediately in school, he stopped doing this around any other children. And, and yeah, that's hard for a child. Only, yeah. And you know, so part of what you have to do is you teach the children that, hey, what our family is safe, but the whole world doesn't feel the same about this. And you know, we, but our work with Keshet is yeah. in the schools is for really to help them become the sort of places where all children are going to be, you know, nurtured and supported, and where everyone expects there to be difference, where they celebrate. Yeah, so you have to help the, the child and the school as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
And it's yeah. hard because schools, by definition, are institutions. It's yeah. kind of like prison for kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, you <laughs> try, <laughs> mate. You make it as nice as you can, but it's terrible it's, no matter who you are. It, it's yeah. definitely boot camp. It's definitely hazing, and it's really designed to socialize children into becoming good members of the Matrix. Right. Don't get him started. There you go. Well, that's, yeah, don't We're going to break started. into Pink Floyd the Wall. Oh, yeah, you're right. I, I have two kids here. I have five-year-old twins, a boy yeah. and a girl, who are both princesses. Completely. Oh. Okay. I mean, they're, they're, okay. they're right now frozen. Everything is about Disney's Frozen. Yeah. And they are those two sisters in the dresses. You know, like The princess is about a better clothes. I mean, come they on. They totally do. Yeah, yeah, they totally, yeah. One day I came home. Papa David, look, he's in this dress. And he spins. So it twirls out. Oh my God, my heart went. I mean, that's that's what I've done. Yeah. Thank you both. Thank you so much for coming on. Hello again, David. <laughs>